So, Cube World finally dropped, and after six years, the game was welcomed with a wide range of emotions. Some people were happy and full of pure joy, while others played the game and had a really unexpected reaction of anger and disappointment. But why? Well, after watching and documenting for the past two weeks, I can think of four main reasons why this is the case. Now, I want to say that I think that this game could have succeeded, even if it was in the state that it was in. But the fact that these four things wound up happening one after another, this began to create not only a bad aura around the game, but a toxic atmosphere where no one even wants to touch the game anymore. But before I get into all this, I just want to say that I do have some announcements that are important for the end of the video, so if you are interested in some future content from this channel, be sure to stick to the end of the video. So let's start with the biggest thing that people bring up, which is the game itself. It obviously isn't the game we had envisioned when we paid for it, and that's the nature of early access. A lot of games have drastic changes that occur over the course of the game's development, but the thing about Early Access is that you're also buying into a game to essentially be a tester. This is discussed a lot within the community, and whether or not this is even really a good system to do. But I think that it has a lot of benefits, like allowing players to find bugs that you yourself would not find, or allows you to talk to your future community and implement things that they would want, rather than shooting blindly and making a game that's subpar, like Cube World. And I think it's safe to say that we all envisioned a completely different game when we bought in the Cube World. Like, we all wanted a big open world experience with leveling that's sort of like single player World of Warcraft progression, but with more spells and pets and all sorts of things. But Cube World removed a lot of that stuff. And honestly, the Alpha and the Beta are two separate games. And if I'm being real here, the Alpha is better designed. This wouldn't be the worst thing to ever happen, after all, many changes occur over a game's life cycle, and if introduced at a proper pace, changes could be made to make the game fun, and better than what was given to us. Which is why the next problem is probably the biggest thing to upset the community, which is Wally. -E. Now I'm not here to personally attack Wally, -E, okay? I'm gonna say that up front. Wally -E went silent for six years, and he released the alpha and poofed showing pre-release material for six years. Showing off aspects of the game we never even got to see. Things like big cities, faction leaders, spells, things that were all cut. And why? Well, we don't know. And he hasn't spoken up about it either. This has led people to just stop trusting Wally. -E. And to be fair, he was already on shaky ground to begin with by leaving for six years, not releasing a single update after he promised frequent ones. I'm just going to say this, I don't trust him either, because as a dev, he has shown that he doesn't understand how to actually make a game. Not only that, but he doesn't know how to properly show pre-release content in a game, because after showing a ton of things on his Twitter, most of these things were not even in the game from what I can tell. Now, if anything does happen, and say, somebody does happen to find a capital city, which I'm pretty sure is just not in the game, I'm pretty sure people have cracked the game at this point, but if anything is found that I've mentioned that is actually in the game, I will take my statement back on this. However, it's really shitty to show a bunch of pre-release content that isn't even in the game. It's fine if it's like, a couple spells that were, you know, changed for something else. That's fine, but when you have huge amounts of content that aren't in the game after you've been showing them off for six years, it's kinda shitty, especially after the No Man's Sky fiasco. However, I cannot sit here and bash on him for the six years aspect of all this without bringing up his depression. Which, I'm gonna be honest here. It's shitty, and no one should ever have to feel unsafe, or threatened, especially by a passion project. But that doesn't excuse what he did. If he released it for free and people were upset, I'd be a lot more understanding of Wally. -E. But he charged us for a game, for early access, a system that is meant for devs to have a large testing group, and then cut that whole testing group out of the equation. He made a bunch of huge changes, and then just said, here, have fun. He didn't even share the big changes until after the game was released, which is a big oof, as the kids say. 
Now these two things are manageable. Things like this happen all the time in the gaming industry and that's honestly a thing that can be managed and fixed. However, the next problem is a pretty big one and it is censorship within the community, starting with Pixie, otherwise known as Wally's wife, Sarah Von Funk, who started deleting reviews on Steam. Deleting vulgarity and personal attacks is all well and good, and that's what Sarah did, or at least intended to do. However, many of the reviews that were deleted were actual criticism of the game, as well as just reviews that are honest about the game's state. This whole fiasco has led to people thinking that Pixie is trying to actively censor criticism on the game, which is honestly really shitty, and one of the worst things you can do as a game dev or even any form of artist is block off criticism, or even delete and censor criticism. Whether or not she actually did delete some of these reviews, it doesn't matter. If she deleted any review, it can be perceived as censorship, which doesn't help the overall public view of the game. I'm not going to sit here and defend people that are personally attacking these people, however. I'm not going to sit here and defend the fact that people are actively personally attacking Wally and Pixie. They don't deserve it. They honestly just made a bad game. And leveling personal attacks at them is just shitty and not fair. And if you are one of the people who are personally attacking this couple, I just want to say that you are no better. By personally attacking them, you show that the community is toxic and bad. And you make it even harder for us to even get any sort of closure with this game. So, with that being said, you're just as bad. It is okay to have criticism, but you have to provide it within a respectful manner, or else it doesn't mean anything. And I think this is a good time for us to segue into the next part, which honestly is probably the biggest part on why Cube World has been review bombed and destroyed by the community that has surrounded it for so many years. And that is that it wasn't just Pixie who censored people. On the 24th of September, the day of the closed beta release, people were mad. And the mods at r slash Cube World's Discord decided to make a beta criticism channel. Now, the community, divided into two echo chambers, are stewing and broiling within their own pots. And anyone coming into the general chat to talk about stuff that they don't like gets silenced and moved to beta criticism, where everyone has a complaint, no matter how minor, is sent. This then leads into what is essentially the poison well of the community, and what is easily the final nail in the coffin for why this game is doing so poorly when it comes to critical reviews. There was no discussion, there was no talking about the game, there was no debate, only echoes ringing from each chamber throughout the community. And how could there be discussion or debate? The mods basically pushed us all into a small room where they didn't have to see us. Not only that, but they limited our speech. We would have to wait 60 seconds to send a message while in general everyone's shilling the game, ignoring the flaws, and they get a 15 second wait. It wasn't fair, and it sent a message loud and clear. No one cared about what we thought. Even if we were objectively speaking, we got pushed to the side and ignored. We were told that we were haters or jealous. We didn't just play long enough and that we just need to get over it. We were shown pre-release materials. We were shown a different game and you don't expect an outcry, let alone a 100% justified outcry. I honestly think that even with every bad aspect of the game, it could have been successful. But the community killed it. The anger and frustration of not being heard for six years and then being shushed by our own community? Well, you know how the rest goes. The question is, can Cube World still succeed? And honestly, I'm always optimistic and I always think that a game can succeed. But what I can say is this, if the moderators within the community and the community doesn't accept other opinions besides the game is good, it's gonna die. It's just going to shrivel up and die because whenever somebody comes in with a criticism about the game, you have to at least be able to acknowledge the criticism that's coming and say, hey, yeah, this is pretty bad, but there's also good aspects too. And if you brought up the good aspects of the game, then maybe you could have had a discussion and maybe metered some of the bad 
press release that the game got. And finally, don't censor your communities. Communities are meant to be big groups of people who all talk and have discussions. And censoring those groups can be detrimental to the community and create a very bad atmosphere. I know that because I've seen it happen multiple times and it's happening again here. But with that being said, I am happy that you watched all the way through here. This is probably going to be my last Cube World related video for a couple of days, maybe even a week or two, because I just need a break from this game. It has been an emotional roller coaster. And for that reason, I also have to bring up this. I did a community vote for what game I'm going to be playing as a Let's Play on my channel because people wanted Let's Play content. So I'm like, hey, I'll do that. But the thing that won out for the Let's Play was, I believe, yeah, it's still Night in the Woods. Cube World was up, like, one vote behind, but I can't play Cube World. I just cannot do it. It's not because I don't like it, but it's because it actually, for, like, makes my processor get overloaded, and I actually can't record the game without it artifacting, and doing that weird laggy stuff that you can see in the background probably. I'm probably using Cube World footage for this video right now, and you can see that it's choppy and jumpy. That's why I'm not playing it. So, yeah. But, um, for the rest of this though, I have Night in the Woods, which will be a blind playthrough, so I hope that people like that. And I will be playing other games, all the games that I listed, which were Oddworld, Stranger's Wrath, Lease of the Painful, Dicey Dungeon, all those games I will play at some point, but I'm going to be focusing on Night in the Woods because that's what the community voted for. And I'm sorry that I can't get a Q World Let's Play out. I need to upgrade my computer before I can even attempt to play that game. But yeah, if you liked this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And if you enjoyed what I said, maybe join the community. You know, we have a Discord community down below. We won't censor you and we won't put down what you're saying as long as you're respectful and talking in a proper way like you know if you're not being shitty about your opinions and putting other people down for liking things then by all means we would love to have you there but see you next time i hope you all have a wonderful day Bye bye